the guys from Ping, they've kind of shown me how much the equipment matters. I just love that I can hit any shot I kind of want. We're going to be able to tell some fun stories about what goes on here to help golfers play better golf. Welcome back to the Ping Proving Grounds podcast. I'm Shane Bacon. That is Marty Jertson. We're here in the tour truck with a, uh, a guy coming off a real heater. Victor Hovland is with us. Coming off a win, and I would say one of the best rounds of golf I've seen in quite some time. Where does it rank in your lifetime, those last nine holes at the BMW? Yeah, that was that was pretty special. I think as as far as playing a tournament round uh, with the amount of pressure, what's on the line, um, that's got to be the best best round I've ever played. Uh, by far the best nine holes I've ever played. It felt like every shot that I well, hit was was like I envisioned it. And and uh, when you start making putts on top of that as well, that's that's when you get something pretty special. So that was that was fun. Victor, how did things build up to like Sunday? Where was it? Were you feeling good early in the week? Did you were you working on any things in your swing uh, that kind of culminated? Did you feel awesome on the range Sunday before you went out? Like, tell us kind of how that that week progressed. Yeah, uh, I, I'd say I'm a pretty tough critic on myself, uh, so I never rarely, never really feel like, man, I am absolutely playing lights out. I'm gonna go and shoot 64, especially over the weekend. Like my bad shots were just so good I, I missed the center of face a lot actually over the course of the last 36 holes but when my misses are going very very straight even when i'm you know I, i'm not hitting the center of the face and the the bad swings are going pretty straight and i'm still giving myself um fairway hits and and short looks for birdie even when i'm not hitting the, in the center that's that's when you know kind of things are you're swinging it well and things are going right um so i i don't have like one particular shot that that stands out but the, the, the drive on 18 i mean that has to be a tee yeah. shot that can't be the most yeah. comfortable for somebody like you obviously moving the ball left to right it looked like you kind of went in the bag and got a little bit more for that tee shot yeah. as well and it was just directly over that tree i mean middle mm. of the fairway it watching on tv watching the whole process of that round and it went from victor's in the hunt to victor's tie for the lead to, oh my God, he's going to win this thing outright. I mean, the way you played 17, 18, but that tee shot to me, it was just, it looked like a guy swinging with the utmost amount of confidence. Yeah, no, that, that was pretty cool. When you, when you mentioned it again, I was like, yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> that one good. <laughs> Got that in the middle. Yeah. That one was not a miss. <laughs> no, it was not. Um, it, it helped that the wind was a little bit off the left, uh, and, and downwind. So I could really just feel like, okay, I can send this ball up in the air. I don't, cause a couple of the other days it was into the wind. And it's one of those tee shots, especially for me, because I don't really draw it off the tee. Uh, I can sometimes. Uh, so it's either one of uh, one of those you have to start it right of the tree and just draw it, or you just hit it straight over it. Uh, but if it's into the wind and you decide to hit it straight over it, the wind's going to hurt it more. Uh, so it's one of those you kind of have to commit to one. If you try to do both, it's hard to put a good swing on it. Uh, but it just made it very easy when it was downwind and off the left, I can almost aim it left, hit it high, and feel like I'm almost hitting just as hard as I can up against that wall of wind left to right, and I just hit it absolutely 10 out of 10. When, when you're playing with Rory, is it also the, like rub off on Rory lines a little bit, and you go, you know what, I'll just take the Rory line on this, and I'll just hit it directly over the tree with uh, no movement. Uh, all, <laughs> he was he was hopefully you were rubbing off on him <laughs> on Sunday. Well, the more I play with him, I just I just realized there's no point even trying to look at where he's trying to hit his drives because, uh, I mean, just on the first hole, like the first hole is long par five, and it's one of those you don't really feel comfortable because it's a pretty hard tee shot. You're not just teeing it high and sending one and down there. I'm just like, I'm just going to hit my low bullet out there in the fairway, Yeah. hit a great tee shot, and then he hits his high draw over there, and he's like 45 <laughs> yards in front. I'm like, oh boy, I gotta just, I just gotta black I'm that not out. Watch this yeah, just not even gonna watch yeah. it. Victor, when it, when there's a hot round like that, I mean, I think usually there's like one point where you get maybe a, a lucky break or a lucky bounce or something fortunate happens, right, to kind of keep the momentum going. What what was that on the back nine there um, yesterday? Well, I'd say I got unlucky on number seven. Um, um, I made a bogey there after yeah. I just pulled my tee shot a little bit in the le uh, to the left and landed in the bunker and bounced up in the lip of the rough. Uh, so like just caught a really bad lie. Yeah. Versus if it was in the bunker, it would have been a lot easier. So I got unlucky there. Unlucky on seven. <laughs> Could have been six. Should have been sixty. <laughs> Could have been sixty. <laughs> See now that's fifty nine. Exactly. Could have been fifty nine. That's, that's the attitude that shoots twenty eight. <laughs> but uh, but it, it going back to your question, it was uh, I definitely had. 
things going my way, for example, on uh, 14 was just yeah. I, I pulled my tee shot left in the rough and didn't have the greatest lie. And I told Shay, hey, I, you know, if this was a better lie, it's a perfect nine iron, but it was sitting down. So if the nine iron comes out a little bit dead, it's going to be short of the green and rolls all the way down. I'm like, the only way I can get this close is if I hit this eight iron and it comes off hot and rolling and just lands on the upslope and rolls up. And that's, that's exactly what it did and ended up to one foot. I yeah. mean, that's, it's what you, you see in your head, but to actually pull that off, that's, you know, that doesn't happen very often. So that definitely, you know, that was definitely, uh, my, my Sunday. Yeah. That was amazing. Now, when you have your iron game like on point, like it was yesterday, do you are you purposely? And I think you talked about it on, on your interviews last night, playing like way more aggressive. Like seventeen, none of the other players in the field hit it back back there behind that pin. Yeah. It looked like it was kind of crowned. I mean, Rory hit his putt back there, give you a little yeah. read, right? Yeah. But you were the only one to get it past that pin. Are you are you playing way more aggressive uh, when you're on? Um, it's a good question. I, I mean, obviously when you hit a lot of good iron shots, you feel that, man, I've last five iron shots I've hit, I've hit exactly where I've looked. So, okay. Why not hit the sixth one in there close, mm -hmm. you know? So it's just, it's kind of gets into that mindset. Uh, but at the same time, when, especially when I'm playing well, I almost never hit the full iron shot. It's almost like that, uh, Tommy Fleetwood kind of abbreviated yep. finish. Um, I just, focus on a number and i feel exactly just okay i gotta just stop right here hit nine or a 90 percent shot as opposed to 95 percent shot yeah and the flight comes down a little bit and especially for those back pins yeah is when i feel like i can hit those low driving iron shots and they'll bounce you know they'll ba uh, take a little hop and then check instead of for example someone like rory that i've noticed he likes to hit those higher iron shots and kind of give it a full finish, which is great for the short pins. And that's how he can stop the ball so quickly. But I think that's maybe a little tougher for those back pins. Yeah. Cause then you got to fly it all the way there. It just makes the target a little bit smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Victor, the, the last year, I mean, you haven't missed a cut since before the open last year, you played in the final period at St. Andrews played in the final period at the PGA. The consistency has been quite incredible and remarkable. And obviously the wins have come as well. What has shifted? Has it been mental? Has it been golf swing? Has it been short game? What shifted in the way you've gone about your business to where it feels like each and every week you're kind of in the hunt, around the top of the lead, and, and obviously not missing any weekends? Yeah. Um, I would say my, my golf swing has changed a little bit. Um, I, but I, I wouldn't say like my ball striking is better than it used to be. I'd say it's maybe a little bit more consistent, but um, I think for the most part, it's been, I've had the shots, but I've picked the wrong spots to go after certain pins. So a lot of it is strategy. I'd say a part of it is, uh, just attitude in general. Uh, and I'd say just the short game. Um, so kind of combining all those three things together, if I'm a little bit off, I have more tools to help me instead of it, you know, Couple Both of times like ballooning or getting, getting yeah, I, I I'd say like a couple of times when I've hit, you know, been in a flunk or whatever, hit some bad shots, and I've allowed the bad shots to bother me more, and then I'm focusing more on those bad shots and where they can go instead of kind of relying on my skill set and and okay, I don't have to hit this drive perfect. I just have to not miss it over there, and I've actually got a shot because my short game can get get out of this trouble. And then if I catch fire on the back nine, we're, we're right back into this, you know? So that's kind of been the mindset. And, um, yeah, it's just, I, I feel like it's prevented things for, from going off the rails, if you will. When you say not being so hard on yourself mentally, I mean, if, if people watch you and you've got a lot of young fans, I think a lot of the reason you have a lot of young fans is your demeanor on the golf course. You come off as a very chill dude. You're, you're, you don't really get up and down. You don't hear much out of you in terms of frustration or even positivity. I mean, it seems like you're kind of a five out of 10 out on the golf course. What's going on inside? Like what's going on inside of Victor Hovland when it's not going well and when it is going well? Yeah. Um, I would say I'm, as I said earlier, I'm, I'm a very harsh critic of myself and sometimes I put more emphasis on how I play versus what the score is. Okay. Um, and that's just, 
how I've been wired because I've never really thought I've been good enough. You know, even in college when I was playing good golf and I had never really had any experience playing against the pros, I'm like, okay, well, I won this college tournament or I played really well in this qualifier. Um, but those guys on tour are just so much better. So I need to hit this shot better, even though I made birdie on this hole. It was not struck in, this, in the center. It flew a little bit too low. I wanted it to be a little higher. You know, just crazy shit, frankly. Because um, now it's it's part of that is still in there when I'm playing golf. It's like, um, you know, oh, I like perfect example number one last week on the par five. I hit in the middle of the fairway, and the pin is short right in the last day. And I'm just going to try to hit a, a low bullet three wood down the left side. And what's been bothering me a little bit, I hit it slightly off the toe with my three wood. So it's kind of drawing now, even though my swing is producing a, a fade shot. But I just tend to draw my three wood. Although it ended up in a perfect spot for me to chip it up there. I was just pissed off that it drew there instead <laughs> of it going dead straight or cutting two yards, you know? So, so, so like, it's the process over the result, and you're, you're trying to get more about the result. Hey, I shot 67 today, yeah. even without my best stuff. Because it gets to a point where I think it's I – th I will say I think that attitude has helped me get to where I am right okay. now. Because I've seen a lot of people that are really, really good, but if you – if you just think that everything you do is so perfect and so good and you just get screwed or uh, you get bad bounces all the time, how are you going to get better from that? But if you but if you see, okay, I got away with this here, but if the scenario was a little different, I don't think I would have gotten away with it. So I need to do better to make sure that if I'm in that scenario, that doesn't happen. Um, but it gets to a point where Okay, if I'm putting myself in the right places all the time, if I hit it a little off the toe, a little bit off the heel, it's it's not that big of a deal, or it it shouldn't be as big of a deal as as it is because if if me thinking about oh it wasn't perfect is taking away my uh, um, if that is making it harder for me to perform and produce results, that's that's not good. So it's just kind of teeter tottering on on that uh, balance there. Victor, I think the listener is going to be surprised hearing you talk about missing your golf shots. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think we watch you on TV and we think you're hitting flushing every single one of them in the center of the face. So um, I want to talk a little bit about your driver. You led mm -hmm. the field last week in driving accuracy. You play a driver that's 45 and three quarters inches. Yep. And I think the listener out there, I mean, I did a poll on Twitter and they still think tour players play 44 and a half inch drivers. Mm -hmm. You know, so our driver is super forgiving. Tell us about um, kind of you making that decision, that jump, because you used to play one at 44 and three quarter yeah. to 45 and three quarter, almost the legal limit. Yeah. And you're leading the field in, in driving accuracy, right? Yeah. I uh, I mean, I remember it was a couple of years ago um, and I was getting into a little bit more speed training. Yep. Because I'd say when I got out of school, I probably had a 168, 169 ball speed, uh, but I was very, very accurate. Um and I, I thought there's definitely um, some equity there if I could if I could hit a little bit further. And my driver length was something that I'd never really thought much about. Mm -hmm. But I was like, okay, well, you know, when I already have a 44 and a half or whatever the length was with the driver, it's, it's hard to get that much physically stronger or faster in the gym or with the, the stack system, for example. Shout um, out. <laughs> nice but uh, you know that that's gonna take time but if i just get a driver that's longer um i you know which i did a couple years ago and i was like man i i gained four miles an hour ball speed just yeah. by doing that yeah and then your brain realizes man i've got a longer club and you can kind of take off the the governor that you have on yourself a little bit yep when you've been swinging a shorter driver so when your body's used to going faster it kind of you open up that growth, uh, and then suddenly, you know, instead of just gaining four miles an hour ball speed, it got to five, six, seven, eight, and now I'm kind of cruising at 177, 178 ball speed, which is 10 miles an hour more than um, I had when I first came out of school. Yeah, that's incredible. I think you and Matt Fitzpatrick are the two players that have gained the most mm. in ball speed from 21 till now, yep. right? So it's kind of compounding some of the stuff you've been doing on the speed side with going to that longer 
length driver. Yep. Uh, I think this is a really good lesson because we fit a lot of folks at the proving grounds and we give them a longer length driver. We have a really cool tool to evaluate their strokes gain driving. Like some, sometimes a player will come in, they'll hit it super straight like you and to get more strokes gained, you want to help them like hit it further and go into longer length Yeah, is a really good lesson. Not for everybody, but I think especially with your mechanics, your technique, how yeah. straight you already drive it anyway. Yeah. Right? The, the problem is if you have a golf swing that, you know, let's say the harder you hit it, the more it just spins. Yes. So your numbers just get all out of whack. Yeah. So when you start adding on length on top of that, now longer driver, that's, it's going to make it spin even more. It's going to be even more inefficient. So your swing has to be in a certain way where it makes sense to, to add that extra length. Yeah. Because it, it's definitely a fitting process that, that has to go into it as well. Yeah. We see that with like Joaquin plays a 46 inch driver, right? Does it really? Kind of similar okay. to you yeah. where you got a lot of handle lean at mm -hmm. impact, a lot of side bend. So those kind of traits kind of yep. stack up as a commonality we see. Yeah. Who is your pro athlete comp? Who, when you look out at professional sport, do you feel like that guy is kind of how I am on the golf course? Is there somebody that comes to mind? <laughs> uh, I, I don't watch sports enough to, to really have a, a good comparison, to be honest. Okay. Um, it's, it's funny because, I, I mean, this is a very big compliment, but I was watching this Steph Curry doc. Okay. And Steph is, the way he goes about his business is hardcore. Okay. And then he's out on the court, and he kind of has a very similar demeanor to you where there are smiles and there is like a pick me up moment and he's intense, but it's not too intense. And it feels like, again, I don't know if it's something you've trained yourself to be, but going into it, trying to look positive on the golf course yeah. probably helps you stay positive on the golf course. Yeah, no, I definitely think it helps. Uh, that's, that's a cool compliment. I, I, I don't watch the NBA at all. But What do you watch? What sports do you watch? Nothing? Nothing. nothing. No golf? Do you watch golf? Uh, hardly. So what do you watch at home? <laughs> what do you get into when you're, when you're on the road or you're at home, you're watching your iPad? What do you do? I just listen to podcasts. Like um, this one? No, no big deal? Yeah. That, I'll add that one to the list. Uh, no, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I FaceTime my buddies. and um, Read? I've started to read a little bit. Okay. I've, I've, <laughs> it's embarrassing, but I've probably only read about five books from cover to cover in my whole life. But I, I do really want to start reading and, and and just start learning more. Have you noticed the type of book that you get interested in? Like, has anything kind of like piqued your interest as of late or even like a genre of book that you're like, I could get into this. I could read a few of these. Um, Yeah, I've been, I mean, just kind of, I've always had a, a very, um, I've always been interested in, in science and, and math and stuff. I've never been good in math in school or anything. But ever since I got out of school, I've just kind of found a, a a way just a more appreciation of it and getting to talk to you and 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 joe mayo my coach yeah uh just explaining how for example i mean in in golf is a perfect example the the golf doesn't or the golf ball doesn't know how much you slept or how you're feeling nope. or what your p2 looks like <laughs> it just it just knows the physics yeah so if you want to have a better understanding of what actually goes on you got to understand physics yeah. physics and math exactly so if you want to, you know, improve your life or make better decisions, it's it's physics and math. And I I, I don't know. I've just kind of it's really interesting and to listen to people that understands this and and know what they're talking about. So I'd I'd like to educate myself in in that way a little bit better myself. Yeah, I think it's, I've been impressed by you. Victor is one of the ones on our staff that calls us, you know, <laughs> so we can talk <laughs> about some of the physics and help you out a little bit. I was going to ask you a similar question when you were when you were driving from tournament to tournament mm. during COVID. Uh, what were you doing in the car? You know, was it podcast, music, alone with your uh, thoughts? <laughs> yeah, uh, at that time, I was more kind of into the, uh, the music realm. Uh, so I was just banging out music for 15 hours straight i mean it was it was a grind um like I a whole album or was it like shuffle I, it was it was shuffle but like new music or okay i'm i've listened to that album now this this band just released a new album i'll listen to that and and then yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't wish it upon my my worst enemy in that car but, um i had a lot of fun but now i've just kind of i still listen to music but not as much anymore uh now i've basically just i mean i listen to some some days, I mean, I might listen to three, four podcasts a day, just spend like literally six hours, just keep it in the background and, and, you know, do whatever. So I'm just constantly listening and, and trying to learn some stuff. 
so you grew up in Norway. You go to college in Stillwater, Oklahoma. What was that two week stretch like when you got there for your freshman year? You're like, this is where I live now. What yeah. was that like? Well, how how is that kind of a smack in the real world face? Yeah, well, it it is very different. Yeah. Um, but I think what would really help me was that I went for a visit uh, about a year and a half before I started, and visited uh, four schools. Oklahoma State was the last school I visited, and uh, one of my high school um, I shouldn't call it teammates because we didn't have a golf team, but we went to the same school in in high school uh, where we had a golf program. Uh, Christopher Ventura went there and, um, when I just visited and he explained his schedule, he's like, yeah, I go to school a couple hours and then we're just <laughs> at the golf course all day. I'm like, sign me up, sweet. <laughs> um, so when I committed and, and came back there, um, in, uh, what year would have been 2016, I guess. Um, it was just, uh, it was awesome from the, from the get go. Cause it was very simple, even though I'm. I'm from Oslo, the biggest city right. in Norway. I'm a I'm a city boy, but when I come over here, you know, moving all the way from Norway to come here, and let's say I would have gone to Georgia Tech, I'm in I'm in Atlanta, right. middle of Atlanta, a huge city. I would have been so lost. Mm. So for me, it was perfect that I just the college town made the most sense to you. Yep, college town was awesome, and everyone on the golf team just had a vision that, okay, we're here to, to play golf and get better and win the national championship. And uh, that just that environment was was awesome to be in. Victor, tell us about just uh, like the golf season in Norway. Where Did you play their sports growing up? Was it like summertime only golfing? What did you do in the winter? And uh, what, what did your childhood of playing golf look like? Yeah, I, was, I started pretty early. My dad worked in St. Louis for a year uh, and just brought a golf set back home. Um, so I was about four or five years old when I started playing. Uh, but when I was around 11 or 12, that's when I, I said, okay, dad, I, I kind of want to play golf in, uh, indoors in the winter. Cause I would just play in the summer. And then for the, you know, last five, six months, I just wouldn't touch a club. Yeah. Uh, but I also played soccer and I did Taekwondo as well. So martial arts. And so I, so I kept pretty busy. Um, but now when, when I was about 12 or 13, I was like, okay, I, I want to pursue this golf thing a little bit. And you, I mean, you'd get, you'd get six months of golf. Would you get seven months of golf? Like how, how long I'd, would the season yeah, last I'd say, outside? I'd say seven months. Okay. Uh, it's very comparable to, you know, some places in the Northeast or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, or in Canada or, yeah. you know, it gets, it gets cold. Um, but what's, what's different is, you know, even though there's snow, uh, and there's a, it's a short season in some places in the States as well, at least when the golf course is open, they're in pristine shape, but that's not the case in Norway. It takes like a couple of months to get uh, them. No, like it, never, it never gets there. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, um, you, you've made a trek back the last couple of years. I feel like, like yeah. around the open where yeah. you've gone back and played some golf. What is it like being a 25 year old going back to where you grew up and you're now this like, you know, national superstar. People are wanting to come out and watch you play as you're out there with buddies and family and things like that. Yeah. Is that uh, surreal? It is a little bit wild, yeah. Um, I just remember a couple of years ago, I was just going to play with a couple of buddies of mine, and we have this, uh, this software online that everyone has to register uh, to put down a tee time. Okay. So my buddy just... <laughs> put his all down yeah. <laughs> yeah and then you know the night before it wasn't like this was planned a week in advance right. it was just the night before and then we show up the next morning and you know there's a couple hundred people on the first tee it's like, <laughs> what is going on so i mean that's pretty cool to see what that that a lot of people are paying attention and I'll, they've gotten into the sport because they're watching me play on the on the pj tour that's that's pretty. That's pretty cool. Um, but it is. It is a little bit weird as well because sometimes I just want to go out there uh, on a Friday night and just right. play with my buddies, and it's. It always feels like you know, it's it's a show kind of. Um, but it's you know that's just how it is. And are we talking like top five most popular people in Norway right now? Is that fair to say? I, 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 I mean, I, I, can I throw you in the top? I'm 10? not gonna. I'm not gonna answer okay, that. Okay. But <laughs> we will. You know what? We'll say it. We'll say top. You track. guys. There you we'll go. Do the research. <laughs> Victor, I want to I want to ask you a question about like just improving your game. You know, I've heard you have you have an interview you did where you talk about kind of compound interest and in making those little improvements day after day. How do you evaluate 
you know, from my standpoint, you've done some things like, you know, you're playing great and you switch coaches or you tinker with your clubs. You try a longer driver. We see you with the double pump on the driver yep. back oh, in the day. I like, forgot about that. How <laughs> do so you, cool. How do you evaluate maybe taking a risk uh, in, in order to get better, right? Because you, we've seen a lot of players in the history of game make a change like that and maybe not, you know, regress. You know, so what is your calculus there? How much courage does that take? Like, what is that process for you? Yeah, uh, I would say some of it is is maybe not always calculated. Some of it is just kind of for the chaos of it, and then just see you know what's going to happen. It's kind of exciting. Yeah. Um, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Um, most of the time, I'm not going to try something completely new at the biggest events, you know. But if I'm playing you know, just a regular tour event and I want to try something, I'm going to try it out yeah. and it, it might not work. Uh, but that's fine. If I can learn from it and, and kind of, okay, why did not, why did it not work? Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Cross that off the list. And it's like, okay, well it didn't work because of this. Well, what if we change it and, and try this instead? And, you know, so it's, it's easy to go down rabbit holes that way. But, um, you know, um, I think it goes back to the question that Joe and I talk a lot about, um, and we we like like to play poker a lot. So a lot of the discussion is is in terms of okay, where's the equity going to come from? Mm. Like the way that I drove it last week, mm -hmm. there's probably not so much tinkering that we need to do with the driver because the driver is, you know, if 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 I need to gain more shots off the tee, well, I probably need to hit it further. Yeah, that's kind of where my my equity, if you will, exactly. is going to come from. Yep. Um, so just on paper, short game was, was where I lost the, or that's where I had the most room for improvement. Yep. So, okay, well we got to do something in the short game and then that process starts. Okay. What is specifically holding me back in the short game? Well, it's inconsistency in contact. I can't predict how the ball is going to come out. Well, why can't I predict how it's going to come out? Well, you know, I'm not controlling the bottom. Why am I not controlling the bottom? Well, I'm getting too shallow in the chipping. I got to get steeper, get the right spin loft. And then it just yeah. kind of goes on like That's that. That's kind of like this, a scientific process. Yep. You know, you just ask, ask why at least five times. Yeah. You, know. you see where it leads you. What's the story of how the double pump started? Was that something you tried or coach or how'd it that was, come about? Um, so awesome. <laughs> I kind of I wish. And why I, like, don't, I don't you do it anymore? You're playing way too good right now. <laughs> but just ever like first tee at the Ryder Cup, just double pumps one 370. <laughs> Well, at the time, I remember, um, like, when I first came out, I, I was, in quotation marks, I was battling this slice, okay. if you can call it, um, which was a good thing in a way, because I, I could just aim it down in the left rough on every single hole, because I knew it was cutting back. And in one way, that's pretty, um, it's, it's pretty nice to have uh, that feeling of, okay, I I can just aim it there. It's never going left. Mm -hmm. You know, that's yeah. that's a pretty nice feeling. Uh, but at the same time, it would always be a certain hole where, okay, it's the dog leg right to left, the fairway slopes left to right, and the wind is off the left. So it's like, how am I going to fit this cut into that tee shot? I, I just can't. And that would bother me a lot. So I would kind of constantly try to even out the, the left to right shot off the tee which now it's a lot straighter, but at the time I didn't have that shot. So um, what I would do is I would kind of pause in the backswing to feel that I can get my left arm a little deeper mm. because my problem would be if I, if I go in one, just hit it really hard and in one swing, my left arm would get so far out and I would have to tilt back so much to, to try to shallow the club out. Yep. Um, but it would always just produce a little cut, which is great. But if I needed a ball to go straighter, I had to kind of get that pause in there to feel my left arm coming a little bit more from the inside. And at the time, it actually gave me a little bit more speed. Uh, so it was like, okay, if you know, on the on certain holes, I'll like, okay, this is a this is a double pump hole, you know. <laughs> and then, yeah, I ended up playing. I think uh the, play <laughs> so the, the play the playoff three years ago so in 2020 I, I think i played one or two whole events literally every single drive was a double pump uh which wasn't a good thing but uh <laughs> i at least made it work that week so uh, Mar marty the, this is a you know, you guys have talked about tinkering and i think something that pro golfers floor me by all the time is their willingness to tinker yeah i mean 
you know, you think about like Phil Mickelson back in the day plays two drivers, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, Adam Scott a few years ago at the PGA Championship used two putters. The <laughs> willingness to use it into tournament round is, I feel like, something that amateur golfers aren't willing to do as much. That's a good hey, point. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm missing it here. I'm not making this swing. I'm not doing the right thing here. But they don't change anything about it. They just keep pushing and keep trying yeah. to yeah. kind of make the same mistake. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one of the things I admire about you, Victor, is just that 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 willingness to take that little bit of risk, you know. Yeah, and the the risk is fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, at the same time, it's like th there's there's got to be a, a reasoning behind the yeah. the risk or or the willingness to change. Because I I do see a lot of it. I, I don't think the message should be go out there and change stuff every <laughs> single day. Right. That's, that's stupid. <laughs> right. Like and honestly, I'm. I'm surprised when I see world class players out here. It's like, oh, I putted it back. Give me a different putter. Right. It's like, what, what? Okay, why did you put it bad? Did you? Are you not starting the ball in line, or is your? Speed are you bad? reading it wrong? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like I, I'm pretty confident with my putter. I start the ball in line almost every single time. Like if I have a bad putting day, it's not because I'm not starting the ball in line. And okay, if it's a speed issue, well, we got to deal with that. It might be just the greens, or is the putter not allowing me to have good speed control. Well, generally my speed is pretty good. So why would I ever try a different putter? Yeah. It just yeah. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You know, either it's my my green reading or like I, I just see a lot of guys oh, I putted about give me a different putter. Well, what if it's a, a completely different yeah, makeup root, root cause, you know. It, yeah. It's going to change your stroke and now you don't have any idea how fast, you know, how how hard you have to hit certain putts. So that's that's just changing stuff just to change stuff and hopefully it works out there there needs to at least be a a good theory and 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 prediction of how the uh change is going to work yeah victor i was going to bring up your putter because you you've used the same putter i think since we played the yeah. phoenix open together yeah. in what year was in, that in 2020 okay uh but is that, you, is that has it been in the bag Three years longer? Yeah, four years. Okay. Yeah. yeah, four years. Same exact putter, right? Yeah. And so it's DS72, and you have a line in the on the flange and on the top. Okay. And on your iPing data, which you're on our leaderboard at the Proving Grounds there on our iPing consistency score, uh, you we see a lot of folks aim to even the best players in the world aim a little bit left, aim a little bit right. You were you were perfectly zeroed out. Is that mm -hmm. something you work on and try to do in terms of like your green read them, green reading? Do you do drills to kind of work on your aim and things of that nature? I think it just – for me, I, I cannot putt without a line on the golf ball. Yeah. So the line on the ball is very important for me. And, again, as as you mentioned with the putter, I have that double line or dual line. And, number one, it helps me with lie angle uh, when I'm looking down at the at the putter. Yep. Because I have a tendency of kind of letting my wrists get a little flatter. Uh, so that will throw the two lines off a little bit. So when I can kind of feel like my left wrist goes a little bit more ulnar, mm -hmm. more straight up, that's when the lines are, are lined up, and it's very easy to aim with that setup. And when that left wrist is kind of locked in like that, it, it helps produce good starting lines as well. So I, I think it's just it's a good putter for me because it makes me check a few boxes to get to where I want to be. Yeah, yeah. I want to go to Pebble Beach real quick before we let you go. Um, one, how many times have you watched the ice plant shot and at what point when you climbed down on the ice plant of that amateur did you think, oh, I can actually hit this thing? Yeah, uh, watched it quite a few times. Yeah. I, I mean, just looking at the some of the USAM coverage from last week, it it, it popped up there I saw on a couple too, of yeah. occasions. So I'm like, yeah, that was, that was a sweet shot. Uh, no, I, I remember because like, I, I, I almost hit driver on that hole every single day. And I hit it down there. One was that, of the were days. you on four? Was that four? Four, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was in the first round of the final. And I just look down there. I'm like, I know the ice plant is is a bad, you know, it's very hard to hit out of. Yeah. Uh, but I just looked at the line. I'm like, it's sitting up perfectly. Uh, now he's completely blind, and I had to go down there 35 feet. But uh, it's match play, and, and might as well we, give it a rip. Yeah, might as well give it a go, and and. Yeah, it just worked out, and it was yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was wild. Uh, 2019, the U.S. Open, obviously after you win the amateur, you played excellent golf. I believe you were still an amateur. You turned pro yep. that next week. You were talking to a few OEMs, kind of looking at some different club companies out there. What made you land on Ping? Uh, I just thought the – you know, I've been around some of the guys before, uh, just 
seeing him in college and and stuff like that and i've always really um just respected the brand and the clubs that they produce uh and i actually did have because <laughs> uh, i i played tailor-made my whole college career and the the year basically before i went to college but i remember one time i i started swinging it so poorly and i actually uh, got fitted for some ping irons and i had a ping driver and i'm like this this stuff's pretty easy to hit so it was <laughs> always in the back of my mind like when I swung it the worst, I, I tr switched to pink clubs. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this is better. Um, but I ended up going back to the tailor clubs because that's what I what I played with. Um, and then obviously when it was time to decide what brand I was going to go with for turning pro, I really, you know, just delved into the stuff a little bit deeper. And I'm like, you know, I love the driver. Putter's great. And the irons were awesome. So I'm like, all right, this... This sounds like a great fit. Yeah, easy switch. Yeah, yeah. That, that U.S. Open in 19 was was uh, was quite impressive, uh, your driving then. Yeah, and the following week, I remember, I think I gained maybe 14 shots or something yeah. stupid in, in <laughs> yeah. two tournaments. They traveled after after yeah, that yeah, was clubs. awesome. Now, your driver, you play that little cut down there. Yeah. Do, with your irons, are you shaping them a lot, or are you just trying to hit them literally with not much curve on them? Not trying to curve it a lot. Yeah. Um, I, I would say I'm I'm hitting a lot of really straight shots. Yeah. Uh, but when uh, that's when I'm hitting the normal full swing. So when I'm hitting that full swing iron shot, it will go very straight. Sometimes even draw a little bit. But when I'm absolutely dialed in and I'm trying to just hit my yardages and hitting those kind of three quarter shots, all take off distance by just trying to cut it a little bit more okay so when i'm really swinging it well i'm like okay a, a perfect shot goes this far i need to take four yards off of it so i'll put a little bit of a you know more i'll open the baseline get my hands to feel like okay they're going a little bit more left and put a little bit more cup, cut spin on it and that's going to take off a couple yards and that's when i'm in the zone that's that's when i'm hitting that just a little We're bigger curve in there and I know the best part about that shot, it's never going left. And so that gives me a lot of safety, and I can really attack pins that way. So you use that curve to control your distance a little bit. Yep. Um, were there any of those shots yesterday at the BMW? Yeah. Um, I would say I, I hit a really nice one onto uh, number 12. Um, I hit a nice five iron down there, positioned myself well, and I had like 155 yards. And going back to earlier, I, I was hitting the irons really far, and it was downwind to front right pin and i'm like this is a perfect kind of cut hold off pitching wedge and i just you know aimed it left aimed it middle of the green and just hit a nice cut in there probably cut five six seven yards yeah they're pretty close yeah. so i hit numerous of those shots in there people are gonna like playing with you at the Ryder cup i believe and especially the way you're swinging at it right now <laughs> when does the mentality switch i'm assuming it's some of it's already there i mean tour championship this week but when does the mind go, okay, it's Ryder Cup time, I'm dialed in, no hats, you know, I'm going to yeah. get my hair cut and get it all dialed so I can <laughs> I can go Euro hatless, you know, yeah. I mean, it seems yeah. to be a trend. And also, who would you love to play with in one of the team events at, or one of the partnership events at the Ryder Cup that you maybe have never played a, a, a group, like a team thing with before? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think you can fully be in Ryder Cup mode until you get there. Okay. But like we like week of get to Italy and you're yeah I, I think that's when it just hits here and, we go and here we go you see the bag yeah it's on um but we're constantly you know we have a, a group th thread and constantly t in talks with Luke uh the captain and you know if I'm playing with like for example I played with Rory yesterday and and anytime I'm just playing with guys that are gonna be on the team it's like. Man, that's going to be so you, much fun. I mean, like, do you talk about it with Rory when you guys are playing, like, yesterday? Yeah, I mean, I, is there chatter about the Ryder Cup? I said after after I made the putt on 18 and we walked off and I said, man, Rome's going to be fun. <laughs> um, and uh, 61. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he, he, played, he played well as well. So I, I feel like our team is really starting to shape up and uh, I think it's going to be a blast. Uh, in terms of the partners, um, I got to play with a few different guys last time. Um, I... I I haven't played too much with Terrell, but, uh, you know, ping guy. And yep. and uh, I, I just really love hanging out with Terrell. So uh, I think it'd be cool. That I think that would be a good pairing. But I feel like what's so cool with our team is that we could literally just put anyone together 
and I think we're going to have just a strong lineup no matter what. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh... I feel like golf people, just when it's Ryder Cup year, you get through the Open Championship, you start to get to the playoffs, and like the focus just all mm. turns to it. And it's three days. I mean, that's also a crazy yeah. thing about the Ryder Cup is it's this enormous thing every two years, and you get three days of it, and then it's, you know, wait two more years, and you yeah. get to go at it again. Um, so so very exciting. We're excited about it. Uh, just excited about seeing everybody with out there. You know, I mean, nobody goes hats. Everybody gets a haircut. Everybody puts a little product in it, you know, <laughs> especially if it's going to be a little windy in Italy. You know, you got yeah. got to add double product. But – <laughs> they're great playing, man. That was so cool to see. Uh, I know I was living and breathing on every swing. Same. Marty. I mean, Same. literally, like, my son was yelling at me about the TV. My like, kids were tuned in. I wanted, he wanted something else on. <laughs> my son's a little young for it. He's four. He's not quite into the golf mode yet, but uh, congrats on the victory. Keep yeah, it going. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, awesome, Victor.